What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Rad Dad Builds. You. So in today's episode, I'm gonna be showing everyone exactly how I transformed my old garage into my studio workshop. So let's get into it. Yep. What's up everyone? So today I am super excited for a couple of reasons. One, we've just moved into a new project house. We just sold our old one. If you haven't seen those videos, I suggest you go check them out. Uh, this is the first video or first project that we're doing in the new house. And second reason why I'm super excited is because it's my workshop and I'm pumped. So today, this video is gonna be rad. So this house is cool and kind of unique because not only does it come with a fair size garage, it also comes with this smaller workshop. And obviously it's really messy right now, but this is where my sanders and jointers and all my machinery is gonna go to keep the dust in here and out of there. And over here in the studio is gonna be kind of like a showroom style studio workshop. So I want it nice and bright. So we're gonna put some decent lights in here. I'm gonna do a white floor, white walls, and like a dark black ceiling. I'm gonna put all my cabinetry in here and have my bench and my table saw. Like I said, most of my dusty stuff is gonna go in the boneyard. So this place is gonna where I'm gonna do majority of my filming. And I want it to look nice and bright, nice and professional. So as you can tell in here, it was used as a garage as it was intended and they parked the cars in here. So the walls are pretty banged up. The floors have stains everywhere. It's pretty grim. So we're gonna do something about it. So, so far in here, I've removed all the previous owner's sketchy shelving, his hooks and all the stuff that were on the walls. And I've gone around and filled every tiny little mark and hole and dent that I can see. And the reason for that is because I'm going to do bright white walls. I feel like with the LEDs, they're going to be pretty bright as well. I'm going to be, any kind of hole or deficiency is going to be really obvious with the shadows. So I kind of wanted to get as much of that filled in now as I can to kind of prevent that. So right now we're going to go and spray the walls. So I went ahead and sprayed the ceiling black and I'm pretty happy how it looks really. I just got like the cheapest paint that I could get from Home Depot and got them to add the darkest, blackest pigment that they have and sprayed it on and it looks really good. It gives the, the room a lot more depth, it makes it seem bigger than it is, even though it is a pretty big room and the ceilings are pretty high. Um, it looks pretty cool. Even though it does look like a scene from Dexter right now, because we did spray it on, it, um, against the white, it looks really cool. And for the final coat of paint on the walls in here, I went with this stuff that I got from my local Home Depot and it's the Bear Ultra Scuff Defense. It's basically an eggshell paint that has the durability of a gloss. So it's somewhat scuff resistant, which kind of makes sense for it to go in here because it is the studio and my workshop. So the walls might get scuffed by accident. So kind of wanted something to defend against all that kind of stuff. And I went with the ultra pure white because that's the brightest white that they, they do at Home Depot. And like I said, I wanted a bright white wall and a bright white floor. And speaking of the floor, and as this is a concrete floor and I wanted it bright white, there's a couple of options that I could have gone with. And my first option, which was my original plan was to do a, an epoxy floor. It turns out epoxy is really expensive. Even the stuff you just throw on the floor. And to do this whole garage, and the, the other workshop would have cost me about 1500, 1500, 1,500 bucks, 1500 bucks, which is pretty expensive considering I'm just gonna be kind of walking around here and making stuff and making dust and making a bit of a mess in here. And it's also really hard to spot repair. So say if I scratched it, scuffed it, or dropped something on it and it chipped, it's hard to repair that little section and it probably would have drove me crazy. So I think I'm gonna go with the paint option, which I didn't realize you can get like a paint specifically for concrete garage floors and they're pretty durable. So I got this stuff from uh, Dulux, which is PPG brand. And it turns out you can have hot car, hot car tire 
which is the thing in here, and forklifts and stuff like that, which is gonna be, which I'm not gonna be doing, by the way, and it's, that's gonna be way more abusive than what I'm gonna put it through. So, I'm gonna go with this route. I'm gonna paint a white floor. And this was only like 150 bucks for two tins, which is enough to do here and over there, including a decent primer. So, and before I go ahead and prime and paint in here, there's a few prep things I need to do to the concrete floor. And that is to remove all the overspray, the oil, the grease and debris from me spraying the walls and the previous owner having cars and stuff in here. And to do that, I rented this thing, which is basically a sander, a floor sander polisher. And it takes these really uh, wide, heavy grit sanding discs. And this is a 12 grit, so it's, um, it, can, it can do a lot of damage. And basically I just went around and sanded the floor dry to remove any of the high spots and the overspray that was left there from when we sprayed. And then we went around with a degreaser and some water and basically buffed out and polished out all of the crap and the dirt that's kind of in the little divots of the concrete and just give it a real deep clean. Let that dry for um, about two days and then we filled in any of the cracks that the concrete had with some concrete floor crack repair and then it's pretty much ready to paint. So while I'm just sat here waiting for all that paint to dry, why don't we talk about this week's sponsor, Inlight. Inlight is illuminating the Amazon marketplace with their sleek and stylish lighting products. Not only are Inlight cool enough to sponsor this video, but they're also kind enough to send me out a bunch of their products to try out. For instance, check out this 60 inch tall, mid-century modern tripod floor lamp. So the base has a matte black finish complemented by the gold lampshade and it's super easy to install. Combining simplicity, class, and modern vibes, this floor lamp will set the tone in any room. With each product that Inlight sends out, it will come with the appropriate tool for assembly and the appropriate bulb to light up your space. If you're in the market for a new floor light, side lamp, or reading light, definitely go check out. All of their info will be linked down below. Now let's go see if that paint has dried. So the paint on the floor has been drying for about two to three days now, and it's cured enough for me to walk on air and bring all the stuff in. And it looks great, in my opinion. It's exactly what I wanted it. Nice and bright, nice and white. And now the only problem is that I'm kind of considering to skip the idea of having this as my workshop studio and kind of have it more of the house dance studio. No, but seriously though, I'm, I'm super happy how it looks. And we, to apply the paint, we did it pretty much how you would roll the wool. We just use a regular roller. Uh, we use a six inch roller for the outside and a paintbrush for just like the curb, which speaking of the curb, I'm not super happy with. I was hoping it's gonna blend in more than it has. So I'm probably gonna trim that out in the future and run some baseboard around the floor. It's gonna help that blend in a little bit better. But other than that, looks super rad. Now that all the paint work and all the prep and all that kind of stuff is done with, um, we can clear everything out and start bringing all my cabinets and all my stuff back in, which I'm super excited about. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah.
So now everything is in here right now. Some of you may recognize my old cabinets and workbench and table saw. Nothing much has changed there. So um, apart from like the space that it's in, it looks way, way better. And that was my whole thing with this side of the, my workshop space. Was I wanted to create a cool background for my videos. And I think with the white walls and the white floor and the, like, the stickers and stuff like that on the wall, it, it looks pretty cool. I'm out of breath already. It looks pretty cool. So there's a few things you may or may not recognize, like this piece of art, which I made out of some broken skateboards, looks sick in here. And it didn't quite make the cut for the inside of the house. I'm pretty glad about that because I kind of like it there. As well as this concrete picture frame we did a while back. Uh, a chair that I made, which will, that's a whole nother video. And some of you may or may not know about this. So we made a video about installing hardwood flooring and me and Wolf did a skit um, where it pretty much involved him kicking over a tin of paint and walking it in the carpet a whole bunch. But I cut out the main section and I kept it because I wanted to put it in a little frame eventually and uh, have that just to kind of remember that funny time. Um, another cool thing about here is I got so much space now, um, I got stuff storage for my bike. So I want to make, uh, this is again will be another video where I want to make some kind of cool storage for my bike and like my skateboard and stuff like that so I can come in and just hang it up and it's out of the way. And um, I also want to kind of sort out this area so that we can kind of put all like the house stuff and like the cardboard that kind of miraculously just turns up in the middle of the floor here it can go somewhere out of the way rather than me having to like take it outside and then bring it back in and take it outside in like my old space, which is going to be kind of cool. And um, oh, I also want to build a bench over in this corner. So when I'm like trying to build something and I'm looking at plans or I want to adjust the plan, I can sit down and work on my computer and maybe have a TV somewhere here at some point on the wall. So when I'm sanding, I can watch TV, but that's, uh, that's a whole nother story. Um, so obviously my jointers and my sanders and all my woodwork machinery isn't in here because that will be going over next door into the workshop. So in the next video, we're going to be creating a space for all that kind of stuff. So you want to make sure to subscribe and check out that video because that's going to be pretty cool as well. We're going to do something cool in there like we have done in here, but different. So um, you're going to want to check that video out. And um, I think that's pretty much it for this video. So I'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Also, before I forget, I just want to say a big thanks to Rad Granda and Rad Grandma for helping me out with a lot of the painting in here and um, some of the electrical work and stuff like that. Um, thank you. You don't want to film this because this is going to be in the comments. The white floor. Look at your white floor. It's going to get so dirty. Your dirty white floor.